Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, in this segment, we're going to be working on replacing these bias pots. And these amplifiers that have the fixed bias, like this and the R8, they come with these same really cheap little china pots. And I know that on the R8, they're problematic because they have no safety resistor. So if the pot goes open, the tube just red plates and it just melts all kinds of stuff down inside the amp. Now this amp does have a pair of resistors across the wiper, got two one meg resistors, one on each side, so that if the wiper does go open, it doesn't lose negative voltage on the grid of the tube, but it's still not ideal. So we're gonna put in some super high quality Vichy trimmer pots, and we're also gonna put a little longer shaft model in, like we did on this side already, that stick up just out of the top a little bit that make it much easier to adjust the bias. And you're still not going to, you know, knock them out of adjustment. I don't know why they sink them down in those little holes like that, but we're going to fix that. You can order the 16 millimeter shafts if you like them being recessed like that. I think them poking out just a breath makes it a whole lot easier to deal with and those are the 22 millimeter ones. I'll put links in the description for the part numbers. These are also available from Mauser. They usually stock them. After this video they may not have any. Y'all may buy them all up but they're $15 each and they're not super hard to find like some of the super specific ones that have the exact resistance that the originals did. We're going to compensate for replacing the 22K pot with a 10K pot. And I'll show you how we do that in the video. So let's get busy fixing this thing. Okay, the first thing we need to do is pull this pair of potentiometers out of the amplifier. And again, come in with your phone like this. Take pictures of where all the wires go, how everything's set up. And then you can refer back to that when you're putting it back together to make sure that everything's going back where it's supposed to. So first we're going to come in here and move these resistors out of our way a little bit and take that wire loose and that green wire loose. And I go ahead and leave them like that. It's easier to remember where they go or look at where they're they were attached before, looking at your phone picture, if you'd leave them attached to the little boards here. So then the other thing we need to remove is, I'm going to go ahead and unsolder these resistors like that. And then it's just a little easier to get to that wire doing it that way. And then the last thing we need to do is pull this white wire loose just like that let's go ahead and cut this off like that so we leave just the tip of it sticking out and then here's our negative side then we come in here take these two Phillips head screws out and then here's our bias pots with the little mounting board and then you'll see there's a couple of washers right there that may or may not be glued to this little metal piece. On the other side they were not glued to this little metal piece and I had to glue them on but on this side they are and it's much easier if you go ahead and glue these to this metal board here or this metal support so they don't fall off while you're trying to put it back in place. So these things are now pulled out and we don't need the amplifier anymore for a while so let me set this up so I can show you how to install the new potentiometers onto this metal mounting piece and then we can put the same back together. Okay, so we got these guys on our workbench here and the first thing you need to do is get a crescent wrench or maybe a little pair of pliers and you take these little nuts off. And on these pots they actually have a thing where you tighten these nuts down and it'll lock the adjuster but it's inside the 
amp and I guess they snug those down just to get those for the tension they want. Anyway, next we come in here and get those loose. And there are the little potentiometers. Now one of the trickiest things for me was getting these off of these little boards. And so what we're going to try this time is I'm going to cut these off as flush as I can get them. Like that. It actually might help get my big wooden clamp here. Clamp this guy down to hold it for me. And then come in here with my desoldering wick and try to soak up as much of this solder as I can and I might even get enough sucked out of here to just be able to pull this thing off and there's other desoldering tools they make they make like little solder suckers and stuff but I've had good luck with this just wicking little stuff like this. And let's see if we can... And there we go. It lifts right off. So, next we have our new potentiometers. And if you notice, these have just little pins coming out where these have little split lugs. We can't solder this because it won't go through the holes in this circuit board, right? So what we're going to do is come in here and trim off one side of each of these. Be real careful doing the second one so you don't cut off the whole tab and you make it look like that. So let me go ahead and do this other second one. So when you get done you're going to be cutting off the one on this side of all three of these pins. And then Slide it through, just like that, and then it does help if you got something to kind of hold it. And you want to make sure that you've got the through hole good and hot so the solder flows all the way through. And don't be skimpy with the solder. That first hole I was using a little bit thicker solder. That didn't work nearly as good as this thinner stuff seems to be. And there we go. Got the new pot soldered onto this board. So when we connect the resistors back up, we're going to be using these two holes. Originally, they had the resistors soldered under these pins. But we might as well use these little traces in the circuit board to run our negative power to the potentiometer. So that's all we're really doing with it out of the amplifier. So let me go ahead and get this other one soldered in, and then I'll show you how to mount them onto our little plate here. As I'm getting ready to solder on this second one, I didn't show you this. See, there's three pins. These two are closer together than this one. See how these are in line and this one's kind of off by itself? That's the wiper and these are the two ends of the potentiometer. And so this is the wiper and those are the two ends of the potentiometer. It's going to sit on there like that. So let me get this soldered up and we'll come bolt them into the board. So another thing I want to point out on this board is this has got 
some protection that they left off of the Wilsonton R8. This one does have these safety resistors. These are one meg resistors that go from the positive to the wiper and then from the negative to the wiper that will act as a voltage divider in case this wiper goes open there'll always be some negative voltage on the grid now on the R8 I just put it on the positive side so it would just shut the tube off if we lost the wiper this one's going to like half bias which is fine it's still going to keep the tube from just going nuclear if the potentiometer fails which is something that they did not do on the Wilsonton which seen reports of tubes red plating just out of the blue when the potentiometers quit working and these little cheap potentiometers I just I don't trust them so anyway the issue we're gonna have here is these have indexing tabs on them these little tabs right here on each side index the potentiometer and keep it from spinning in this little bracket but when we hold it up here like this you can see this tab just doesn't fit in that slot or if it does go in that slot it's not quite centered pretty close but not quite so I want to deepen this slot just a little bit and then I want to come in on the other side and add a little slot opposite this for the other marked index in and I'm just going to take a dribble tool and do both of those so let's get let's do that let me put this in my little clamp so it doesn't burn my fingers when it gets hot and try to do this so y'all can see it on camera So that just deepened this slot just a little bit. Now we're going to come over here and put a groove on this other side for the other index slot to fit into. And that should be enough right there. So, see, we just added a little slot over here, deepen that slot. So you can see now that we've done that, this slot fits in on this side, just like that. And then this one on this side fits into that slot, just like that. So, let me cut this other one out, and then we'll bolt this down, and I'll show you what this looks like when it's all assembled. Okay, we got our two little potentiometers all mounted up. Got them indexed to the plate, got them bolted down with their little nuts and washers, and then got the circuit board soldered on them. Now I did do a little goof, which is absolutely a small goof. I should have notched the other side of this plate. These washers are glued now to the top instead of the bottom, but obviously just knock those off and glue them onto this side and we're ready to go. But if you're doing it, make sure that you notch the side opposite the washers instead of what I did but anyway you can see how nice those little notches sit down in those little grooves I made and then the other notches fit right down in here in these little grooves so they're indexed nice and solid and anyway I think we're good to go here and you can see these are a little longer than the other ones so that they'll stick up just slightly above the surface now if you want them recessed again you can get the 16 millimeter instead of the 22 millimeter, but I like the idea of having the screw slot sitting slightly above the top of the amplifier so you can see the slot when you go to work on it. So, next we need to put the dropping resistors on each side of the potentiometer, and before the negative voltage hooked directly to the potentiometer to this side, and then there was a 10K resistor that went from here to the ground. Since we're using a 10K pot instead of a 22K pot, I wanted to add about 12 
k of resistance to the potentiometer and center this between the two voltage points. And so this time we're going to come back and put an 18k resistor between here and ground. So we're adding 8k of resistance on the ground side and then we're going to put a 5k resistor between here and the negative voltage. So what we're going to do is get a couple of resistors, twist the leads up like this. Come in here, solder them together. Just like that. And make like a, a T shape out of them, like this. And then they're going to go from this point to this point. So then come in here and snip that off. Leave about that much of the lead on it. I'm going to cut these off a little shorter. Like that. So they'll sit down closer to the surface. that so that our ground wire can come up and solder onto that one. Now we need to put 5k across here and have the lead facing out that way. So let me get a couple of 5k resistors. And I'm using 2 watt resistors but these things really could be quarter watt. They don't have hardly any current going through them. But we're going to go ahead and use these 2 watt ones because basically that's just what I keep in stock is 2 watt resistors. Because with point-to-point -point wired stuff, you really don't need those little tiny resistors like quarter watt ones and stuff like you would use if you were doing circuit board work. Okay, so on this one, it's going to go like this with the little tied together lead facing this direction. So one wire can come up there and one connect there. So we just bend these leads over. And one thing that helps it kind of stay in place like this, if you stretch it a little wider than the holes are, and then when you put it in, the tension of the leads up against the side will kind of hold it at the height you want. And then when you're done, make sure you look at the underside and make sure the leads aren't sticking through too far where they're going to short out on something. Yeah, let me show you what this looks like now. So you have our 5K resistor from here to here, and it's turned sideways like that. And then the 18K ones are like that, with this facing down. And then, like I said, just look in here and make sure that none of these leads are touching this metal case, which all of these look fine. So we're ready to bolt this thing back into the amplifier and hook these wires up and we'll be done swapping out the bias pots. Okay, and we're almost done here, down to the easy part. We just have to solder up four wires, put a couple screws in, and this thing's all done. We glue the washers onto the correct side of this little plate. It's going to sit in there just like that. Before we put it in there, I want to connect this black wire up to these resistors. So we'll come in here like this. And that's the ground going to the 18K resistors. We'll go ahead and set this guy down in here because the rest of the wires are easy to hook up after it's screwed in place. And then don't tighten them down until you get both screws in and get the adjusters aligned with the holes like you want them.
and you can see the adjusters get them centered in the holes and then tighten these screws down just like that then we have this white wire and if you find it easier you could solder this white wire on first I'm going to go ahead and do it now that I've got this already where I want it just like that then we come in here and the yellow wire goes to this point right here and then the green wire goes to that point right there just like that and we can neaten these up just a little bit you actually could shorten that yellow wire up a little bit if you want to but it can sit just like that and it's fine and that's it we're all done and again we come back and give one last little look at the picture that was on the phone come in here and look and then we can see that the yellow wire was hooked to this side the green wire was hooked to that side and there's our yellow wire and our green wire so we got everything hooked up ready to plug this thing in and set the bias with these new potentiometers and should work wonderful so we've got the switches done the new pots done and that absolutely is going to repair the problem that this amplifier had and then finally i want to show you the schematic here's what it looked like before with the 22k pot and the 110k resistor and then here's how it's wired with the 10k pot and the 5k and 18k resistors so as you can see replacing these pots isn't a huge job it takes a little bit of fab work to make them fit because they are physically a little different but they're close enough where they pretty much bolt in with just a little bit of work and these are so much higher quality i don't think you'll ever have a problem with these failing and like i said at the start of the video even if you do at least in this amp they have some safety resistors across the pot so that you never totally lose the negative bias on the grid of the tube. So if you're working on an R8 or some other fixed bias amp that doesn't have a safety resistor that goes to the wiper to keep the negative bias in case the wiper on the potentiometer fails, make sure you install those too. And we've talked about that in my R8 series. So think this is a good option guys to put some high quality pots in these things because it's really critical on these fixed bias amp that you don't lose that negative bias and that it stays stable and I think what people are seeing when they see the bias change as the amp warms up isn't the tubes changing I think it's the values of this potentiometer drifting with temperature which is a sign of a substandard part especially for this application it needs to hold its value and not drift with temperature because then the bias changes as the temperature of the amp changes and that's not a good thing so i think we've got all the problems this thing was sent to me for repaired next video we're going to get into doing some upgrades there were some power capacitors that i really think need to be stepped up in voltage he agreed that he's never going to use the headphone jack, so we're going to eliminate that headphone jack wiring like we did in the R8 and wire the applet transformers directly to the speaker jacks. We're going to look at the grounding. This amp looks like, from a casual inspection, a much better grounding system than the R8 had. It looks like they're using a star ground point. They're using the negative terminal of the first capacitor in the power supply as a star ground point if that's the case we don't have to mess with it this amp also looks like it has nicer coupling caps 
The resistors look higher quality. Honestly, this just looks like a higher quality amp than the R8 for just a little more money. Once we get done doing the upgrades, take it over and do a side-by-side -side comparison to the R8 and probably even put the same tubes in both the amps so we're not, you know, messing with that or at least the same output tubes because I've got another set of these KT88-Zs that I can put in the R8 and then listen to the two amps and report back at the end of the series which one of these I think you should buy. So, hope you're enjoying this content. If you are, please subscribe. Please like the video. I think there's a bell down there somewhere you can click that will give you a notification of new videos. And until next time, have a nice day. Thank you.